Hey, you are listening to Oh Crap Parenting with me, your host, Jamie Gorlacki. This is a podcast for conscious parents who drop the F-bomb a lot. Welcome, welcome. Today, I am so excited because I'm talking with Dr. Barb Woger. She's a naturopathic doctor practicing in Vaughan, Ontario, Canada. And her clin- clinical focus is women's health, stress management, and inflammatory conditions. That about covers it all, right? <laughs> Dr. Bob also spends a great deal of time educating individuals on the importance of magnesium and why we all need to add this to our health toolbox. And you guys know I preach, I preach the choir of magnesium or pulpit of magnesium. So welcome, Dr. Barb. I'm so excited to talk with you. Thank you for so much for having me, and I am always excited to talk about magnesium. So. Yay. All right, let, let's jump in. First of all, um, let's talk about the types of magnesium. So my intro to magnesium was about, I don't know, 10 years ago, I did like perimenopausal blood work, and my naturopath called me and she was like, you can't be pooping. You cannot be pooping. You are so low on magnesium. And I was like, what? No, I poop fine. And she told me to like, go get um, a liquid form. And she was like, drink it, just drink it. Don't even dose it. <laughs> and so I was yeah. like, oh, and then instantly I felt like just all well-rounded better, you know? Right. So, and I didn't, I was unaware that there are types at the time of magnesium. So let's run through the types of magnesium and start there. Yeah. So the types of magnesium or forms of magnesium are really, really important because if you're looking to achieve a certain outcome and you use the wrong form, you're not going to probably be very successful. Um, So there are, I think, 17 or 18 different forms, but we're going to talk about the most common forms that you can actually purchase, you know, off the shelf in a health food store, grocery store, pharmacy, those kinds of things. Um, The other magnesium forms are more reserved for medical fields and stuff like that. So probably my favorite one is bisglycinate or glycinate. It's the same thing. Um, This is a form of magnesium that is really well tolerated. Uh, It's really great for nervous system regulation, sleep, just that calming, relaxing. It's mixed with glycine, which is um, obviously a calming um, amino acid. It's also really well tolerated and absorbed. So it doesn't require stomach acid. So it's good for people who can't absorb their, their nutrients very well. So people who have GI issues, Crohn's, colitis, those kinds of things. Um, And so this is probably what I call an all-around form. So if I want to deal with several different things, I'm headed towards that form. Um, Then there's citrate. So citrate used to be like the most common one before glycinate came on the scene. And citrate is more... I use it more for digestion, so constipation, GERD, uh, acid reflux. There's some research for migraines, and I have used it for migraines um, at a certain dose, 6 to 800 uh, milligrams, which is kind of what's in the research. Um, But I mainly reserve it for digestive um, issues. But it it was there for sleep, and it was there for stress reduction and all of that. And they still have some products that you can use at night to help with sleep that are based from citrates. So there's that one. Like natural calm. That's probably one. Yeah, natural calm is a citrate. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, and that's just a powder and, and that's more for sleep, right? So, and stress reduction, not probably my first go-to if it was just a stress picture. Um, Then we have malate. So malate is really great for patients that suffer with energy issues, uh, chronic fatigue, fibromyalgia, um, you know, tender points, muscle aches, joint pain, all of that kind of stuff. Um, but it's, it's really great for energy as well because malic acid is in that Krebs cycle. So it's going to help, um, improve energy. So I like to give it to chronic fatigue patients or patients that just don't have a lot of energy, Mm. um, reserves. And it's also really great for removing heavy metals from the body. So like aluminum and stuff like that. Um, yeah, so we use it for that as well. And if you were um, to use it for removing heavy metals, would you need a binder? You would always need a binder. Yeah, always for, need a binder. Okay. For, yeah, yeah, because you need to actually 
get it out. Hold on to that and get yeah. it out, right? So yeah. um, let me just say, what's just your helps. favorite binder? Oh, it depends too on the situation, but sometimes I will use charcoal. Just charcoal. Um, yeah. I'm like, that's probably the easiest and um, best and most tolerable. Some people use bentonite clay, but I find people have issues with bentonite clay, like mm-hmm. GI issues. So I usually stick with charcoal would probably be my, my top one. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, and then we have L3 and 8, which is um, kind of a newer magnesium on the block. Um, it's more cognitive, brain health, uh, mood, anxiety, depression, ADHD. All of these things are, are really falling under this uh, form of magnesium. It's really special in that it actually crosses the blood-brain barrier. We know this. Now, there are some other forms that cross. But we just don't know to what degree, um, whereas L3 and 8 has been shown to actually cross the barrier. And most of the research for L3 and 8 is all on cognition and cognitive decline. So, you know, where they're doing research based on older individuals with cognitive decline and how well do they recover from 12 weeks of um, magnesium supplementation. And so what they were able to find was a lot of the times we were able to reduce cognitive age by nine years. So it's pretty significant. Whoa. Um, yeah. That's huge. Yeah. Yeah. After 12 weeks of dosing. So um, it's a really great um, form if you've just got anything, cognition, brain health, mood, those kinds of things. Um, so that's what I use for that. Then Torate, um, it's a little less common. Um, and oftentimes with Torate, I will actually, I will use a magnesium and then add in a separate Torate because I find like in the taurate formulas, they don't dose them very high because the taurate molecule is so big. Um, and so we sometimes we'll just add it in in addition, but great for like blood sugar control, heart health, uh, those kinds of things. Like if you're really dealing with those, um, the other one for heart health is orotate. It's another one that's not as common and much harder to find. Um, and often not used, but it is well researched in heart health. So anything cardiovascular. Um, and then we finally have like our topicals. So sulfate being like the Epsom salts. Um, so you, we, there's not a lot of ton of research on how much we actually absorb. We just know that we do absorb some, some people mm-hmm. will absorb more than others. And so, um, Epsom salts would be like your sulfate and then your chlorides would be more like your magnesium oils, magnesium gels, those kinds of things. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And they sometimes can come with an irritation, right? On the skin with for yeah. some people. And it's usually not good if it's very irritating. Like people who have sensitive skin, it can be very, very irritating. So, um, yeah. And I recommend I, it for like toddlers, you know, to help because it, it, for me, it helps so much with like restless leg or like, if I can't yeah. get to sleep, I just spray some on my feet. But of course with toddlers, their, their legs are all cut up, you know? So I'm like, don't do it. on Don't do it on cuts. Yeah. It's going to hurt. Yeah. <laughs> I actually often dose it on the feet because that is where the skin is a little bit thicker. And so it's, it doesn't cause as much irritation. Yeah. Mm. Okay, yeah. cool. So, yeah, so those are kind of like your main forms of magnesium that you're going to see out on the shelf. There's going to be some other ones that are not as common. Um, and of course, they obviously don't have a lot of research. They're going to research the more common ones um, in individuals. And now, do you think it's better um, to try to dose these individually to, to what you need? Or do you think most people would benefit from sort of a a multi-magnesium that contains all the forms? Because I've seen both. Yeah. So again, it's whatever you're trying to deal with. So if you've got a constipation issue, using all forms is not going to be helpful for you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, The problem with the all forms is there's a little bit of everything. It's kind of like taking a multivitamin, right? Right. You're not getting therapeutic doses of any of the um, multivitamins and minerals in that. You're getting a little bit of everything. And so the formulations that they have with the different magnesium forms, you're getting a little bit of everything. Now, the other thing you kind of have to watch for on these forms is um, if they're using oxide and if they're using oxide as a form of magnesium um, versus as a buffer. 
So when you have different forms of magnesium, um, oxide is a small molecule. So you're going to get lots in. So you'll be able to buffer more forms in. Now, some companies will just use oxide as one of the forms. The problem is they don't list how much they use. Mm. So you might buy a form uh, like a, you know, five or six different forms, but 90% of it is oxide. Ah, uh, okay. And so I, yeah, often, I have no use for multivitamins for that very reason. So it sounds like, it sounds like the same, <laughs> the same deal with yeah, magnesium. I mean, if you want a little bit of everything and you don't have anything really going on, then that's, that's, that's fine. But oftentimes we're doing things therapeutically. And so we need to kind of get the the maximum strength of what we want to do. Yeah. Now, would you say like when you use these for specific things, like let's, let's just take like citrate, right? So is, is constipation because you, you are low on magnesium or is the citrate on top? Like you, your magnesium levels could be fine and you need an extra yeah, so constipation is, it's a dysbiosis of the gut bacteria, right? right? And so what's happening is the gut bacteria are, you know, not in balance. <laughs> and we also have a slowing down of motility. So when we have this slowing down of motility and we have this gut dysbiosis that's happening, this usually causes constipation. So we do need to work on the underlying problem of the constipation sure. um, or else it's just going to be a Band-Aid, right? Um, so the motility aspect and the... Um, gut dysbiosis, they're kind of things that you're working on in the background, but you're using citrate to help along. So citrate is going to bring more water into the colon and it's going to bulk up that stool to make it want to move, especially in a slower motility environment. Um, and so that is what the citrate is doing. And it's going to allow for a easier more efficient, I guess, bowel movement. Mm -hmm. Will it get rid of everything? No. Like it depends if the stuff is caked onto the inside of the intestinal wall, then that's, that's another issue. And we use a different protocol for that. Yeah. Um, it depends. And it, kind of, you know, we often will require like a, a KUB x-ray or something like that, that will show us kind of, okay, what does the intestinal tract look like, right? Is it gunked up with poop or like, what are we dealing with? Um, and so we, we determine kind of what we use, um, from what we see on that imaging. Yeah. I have to sometimes recommend re x-rays because parents just don't believe how full a child can be of poop. And you know, what's really interesting is people will balk at using magnesium, but they'll be on Miralax for like years. And I'm like, that doesn't make any sense. I'd use magnesium first. <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't know. Up here in in Canada, we do restore lax. Restore right? lax, so, yeah, same thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's automatically restore lax, and you know, and that's great. It's a laxative, um, but your your bowels aren't actually a. You're not dealing with the problem, right? right? Like so, that never gets addressed, and then the bowels get used to that laxative, right? Yeah. So, um, citrate is an osmotic laxative, but it's not a stimulant laxative. Um, right. And so there's a difference there. And so, yeah, we use citrate kind of to help us get things going. Um, but if they're full, 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 then we use oxide because that's the only one that you're going to get some of that clearance out of there. Gotcha. Yeah. It's, um, it all comes down to the gut, isn't it? It like all comes back to the gut. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it does. And, you know, a dysbiosis or just a slower motility time is going to cause problems. And in a child, it's harder because they don't eat kind of, you know, they're not sitting there right. eating fiber and, you know, all these other things. That and drinking all their do. water. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. right. They're a little bit, they're different from this. So when you see cry, like, so the, I see how the, these all, the forms relate to certain issues, but how do you test how do you test if you're low on magnesium and are you going to be low on these specific forms? Is that no, because the forms, so 
what we test in the body is just magnesium. The forms are all attached to an amino acid or some other molecule, right? Okay. So um, glycine is an, am- is an amino acid. And so it gets attached to magnesium and it allows for the magnesium to actually enter the cell. That's why we attach these molecules. So if you eat magnesium-rich foods, so let's say pumpkin seeds or something, you're getting just magnesium. There's no form attached to that. Um, Now, testing magnesium is a little bit of a problem because only 1% of the magnesium is in the blood. So if you take a magnesium serum testing, you're really only looking at 1% and almost everybody is going to be in the normal range. I've only seen one outside of the normal range. Um, So there is RBC magnesium testing. It's also not perfect. Um, It's a little bit better than the serum. And here you're going to want to be at the very high end of the range of whatever the uh, lab is using as references. Um, But really, I mean, in the research, they use mononucleated cell uh, testing and muscle biopsy testing, which obviously is invasive. And we would not be doing this to our patients or clients. Right. right? So, so you go more diagnostically on how the person is presenting and their complaints. Yes. So their symptoms and what could be depleting their magnesium, right? So 70 or 80, somewhere in there is the percentage of the magnesium deficiency rate for individuals. And yes. so that's high. Yeah. And when you see that vitamin D is deficient, this is also a problem because you can't actually absorb your vitamin D unless you have enough magnesium. And if you don't have enough magnesium, you're not going to absorb vitamin D. So you're going to be vitamin D deficient. And almost all vitamin D deficient patients are also deficient in magnesium. And so that is a really critical point. So what I look at are symptoms. And then I look at, okay, what is depleting their magnesium? Do they eat a lot of sugar? Are they under stressed? Are they insulin resistant? Do they take medications that deplete magnesium? Do they, um, you know, are they an athlete? Do they sweat a lot? (laughs) You know, are they losing it through their sweat? Um, There's like 60 plus causes of things that deplete magnesium, including high dosing vitamin D when you don't have enough magnesium, right? So all you're doing is depleting it further. So, um, yeah. So there's now, how about, so that's how about too how much water? At. How much, like, cause we, one, one thing I struggle with, with my clients is they seem to be under the, the impression that you can just drink endless water and their kids are drinking so much water. So obviously this becomes a problem with potty training, but I also like that strips it too, right? Cause that, that'll strip your, mag, um, your electrolytes. Yeah, if you're you're going to the bathroom a lot, because that is how magnesium comes out is through right. the kidneys, right? Um, so large amounts of water, large amounts of sweat. This is you know one possible way we're going to lose it. Um, sure. But two, like there's also the thing if you're bunged up or you're really constipated, adding more fiber and water to the mix is not going to help. Right. Um, it, it's not, right? We need to deal with what's gunked in there that's causing this backup and this, you know, and if you see the patients or the clients that actually do get the x-ray when it gets to the point where they're having, you know, stomach issues and all sorts of, you know, cramping and stuff like that, it's not that they're like not eating enough fiber or having enough water. They just have so much stuff stuck inside that there's no more room. And this is what's causing it. And so if you add water and fiber, you're probably going to make things worse because you're still not able to move what's in there. And so sometimes you have to deal with what's in there before you start, you know, dosing lots and lots of water. Yeah, for sure. Um, now, you talked about stress. How does stress affect? Okay. Well, it's a two-way magnesium. street, right? So magnesium helps us deal with the stress, like the physical ailments of stress. So it mm-hmm. helps us deal with, you know, cortisol and adrenaline and those kinds of things. It keeps those kind of balanced so that we don't get the physical effects of stress. But if you're really stressed all the time, then you're using up that magnesium in order to help you control the cortisol and the adrenaline and all those physical effects of stress. And so stress is going to deplete 
you know, whatever reserves or levels of magnesium that you have if you don't deal with it. Sure, we have enough to deal with, um, you know, acute stressors, but if you've been stressed for months on end, then I can pretty much guarantee that you're at the bottom of the bucket when it comes to magnesium levels yeah. in the in the body. In your clinical practice, you know, you work with women, what are, what are some of the top stressors? Because I feel like people uh, miscategorize stress, like they feel like they only count it if it's like this acute, like, no, I wasn't stressed out. But I'm like, dude, the lifestyle you live is extremely stressful. Like what are, what are some of the things you see in women in your practice? Well, you have to remember too, like I'll ask women in my practice, oh, so what, what are your stress levels? Like, oh, they're fine. I'm like, okay. Um, so then I ask a different question. I'm like, so what are some things that would stress you out? So I'm asking it from a point of like, okay, so what are some things that would cause you stress? Right. Yep. So, and they will be like financial relationships, children, like, you know, all the common things. And so what the body is very good at doing is adapting. Mm -hmm. So you're stressed you don't do anything about it, but your body adapts to that stress and says, okay, this is the new normal now. Right. Until the next stressor comes along. And then you're like, oh, I feel a little bit stressed, but then it kind of normalizes as we would think, like as the patient would say, but all that that's happened is their body has adapted to this level of stress now right. instead of actually dealing with the stress. So if you're up here and you're normalizing it and your body has adapted to it, you're probably going to answer the question of, I'm not really that stressed. And so you can see how that can then play on that bucket of magnesium that's constantly gay, keeping you here and keeping yeah. you like, you know, at your new normal. Because when you put those patients on a stress reducing model, like whether we introduce some meditation or, you know, some deep breathing, or we give like a adaptogen or some formula that's going to help bring down that stress. They're like, oh my goodness, I was super stressed. <laughs> and they're like, they feel different. Like they come in and they're like, wow, like I had no idea. So if they're always up here, they're always kind of depleting that um, excess yeah. magnesium. I asked too, because I've always lived in major cities and I, in 2020, moved to the woods, just uh, in the <laughs> middle of the woods and I'm out in the rural area and it's like one lane, you know, driving and yeah, there's no street lights, but who cares? There's no cars, you know, it's just, it's so, and when I drive into the city, it is palpable. Like, I just like, oh my God, everybody's angry and rushed. And, and I was like, I had no idea I was under so much stress. Like just the stress of living in a city, congested, lots of people, managing people till I moved to the woods and like see birds and trees every day. And I was like, right. oh, now I'm not stressed. Right. And it, it's, it does exactly the same with the adaptation. Right. And so many women <laughs> will say they're not stressed at all. Yeah. And so you have to kind of show them <laughs> the difference, right? It, because if I were to ask you and you were living in the city, you probably wouldn't think you were any more stressed than you would. Nope. You know, nope. like you wouldn't Didn't recognize that it until your environment changed, right? Yep. And then your environment changed. And then all of a sudden you were like, oh, I guess I must have been a little wired, right? Because that is how the body adapts. And it does that for good reason. And then when it's finished adapting, that's when you basically crash, right? Yeah, like that's yeah. when you're in There's like no just more. the body just says, you know what? I can't handle this anymore. I can't handle cortisol up here anymore. Um, and so it's going to then present with different symptoms, um, which yeah. are far are worse. <laughs> I hadn't even realized it until I'm talking to you right this second. I'm like, I used to like need magnesium, like need it and, and soak it up. And now that I live in the woods, I'm like, I like it, but I, it's not like I have to have it, you know, because <laughs> right. I'm not draining right. my bucket, right? <laughs> exactly. As fast. Yeah. <laughs> um, is there a better form of, is, are these all capsules? Is that, are there chewables? Are there better forms of magnesium? I mean, to take. Yeah. Yeah. So capsules would be my preference because there's the least amount of things in the capsule um, versus maybe a powder or a chewable. Um, now, when you're dealing with kids, you might not be able to do the capsule. Sometimes what I'll get them to do is open the capsule because most of them are, you know, veg uh, vegetable capsules and you can open them and take the powder out. Um but you have to be careful with some of these chewables and powders because they contain tons of sugar, they contain tons right. of additives and natural flavors. And, you know, if you've already got 
a child that's got you know, behavioral problems or maybe ADHD or the, that's the last thing you want to be giving them on top of that. Like you're right. kind of taking one and, you know, if you're not coming out, yeah, with a it's a lateral move. <laughs> right? Yeah. Like, it's just like, okay, we've just given this kid more sugar yeah, and we're trying to get their magnesium up. So usually what I'll do is, um, if I can find a clean powder, which, um, there are a couple companies that, um, have fairly clean powder. They don't taste great. You're going to have to mix it into applesauce or something that they can actually, um, take it with. And if it's an adult, then it's straight capsules. That's going to be your best benefit. You're going to get the least amount of things in that capsule and you don't have to deal with a lot of the additives and stuff. Yeah. Maybe when we um, get off the call, you can tell me those brands and I can put them in the show notes for people. Cause that would be, sure. that would be amazing. Um, what else did I have to ask you? So is, Oh, you had talked about, um, the one for dysregulation. So that's the gly- glycinate? Glycinate? glycinate, glycinate. Yeah. So that's going to help people who are feeling dysregulated, the nervous system. Yeah. So it's, it's probably the most relaxing of all the magnesiums, which is why we dose it at night for bed or during the day, if they've got a lot of stress going on and the nervous system is really active and, and, you know, they're just dealing with a lot of stress all the time. Um, we will give glycinate or bisglycinate. It's the same thing. Just some companies will put the bis in front of it and some will put no bis. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. But they're I've seen identical. that online. Yeah. They're identical. Yeah. 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 And it is, it's well tolerated. I, I will give that to kids as well. It's well tolerated. Um, I'll also do citrate with children. I'll do oxide if I need to with kids. Oxide is a... Um, it's a different type of form of magnesium. We don't absorb it. So I don't have to worry. We, we absorb less than 5% of what we take in for magnesium oxide, which is why I was saying when you have these formulas and they just list proprietary blend yeah. and it includes oxide, you really have to be careful because oxide is a very inexpensive molecule, but we don't absorb it. And if 90% of that supplement is oxide, then you pretty much don't have a very good supplement there. It's not doing much. Right. Um, but if you use oxide for, like I do a lot of bowel clear outs and stuff like that, yeah. I will use oxide. In in adults, I will use a solution called Citromag that we have here, which is a, um, it's a citrate that is in liquid form. Okay. Um, and it's like in a bottle and they can buy it at the pharmacy. And it's, it's kind of like a step below a colonoscopy prep. Okay. Um, so it's a day where they need to spend at home. At home. Um, and then they, they do like a bowel clean out. And then um, with kids, I'll tend to use oxide depending upon their age and how backed up they are, but I can dose it fairly high and I get a a powder compounded. So, um, it's easy for them to take and it it gets them cleared out. So that's good to know because I used to recommend for every single, I specialize in poop and poop withholding, you know? And so I used to always recommend an x-ray because parents just couldn't believe that they were so backed up. And every single time the x-ray came back, the kid was like up to their eyeballs in poop. And so I almost, I stopped recommending it because I was like, it's just, by the time you get to me, your kid is up to their eyeballs in poop. So yeah, I still recommend it because it's, it's good to have. And I feel like the patients become more compliant because they can see it. Um, again, some people have a bowel movement every day and they don't think they're constipated right. and, or their kid will have some form of a bowel movement and they'll be like, Oh no, no, he or she, they, they go every day and we're fine. And I'm like, mm, <laughs> that's not always the case, right? Because we can still eliminate every day, but if there's all this gunk stuck in there, just kind of builds up and builds up. And so yeah. I still recommend, um, and sometimes they're actually going to the doctor and the doctor's just mm-hmm. doing it. Um, but I definitely do still recommend, um, the x-rays. It's just for compliancy. And we can see too, how, you know, how much do we have to get rid of? (laughs) Like, is it just a little bit? Is it like, are they full? I find the opposite. It's doctors won't, pediatricians won't get, give them a referral. They can't get it. Like they have to really Mm -hmm. fight for it to, so then they're fighting for something they don't really want anyway. (laughs) 
Right, right. <laughs> you know, I think it's a little bit easier here. <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> sounds like yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, those were like my pressing questions. Do you think people have to be like, especially with kids, moms, should everybody be on some sort of form of magnesium? Um, in children, it's a bit different. They're not going to have as many things depleting their magnesium as adults, right? right? I mean, most kids aren't under real chronic stress. I mean, there are some for sure. Um, most uh, kids are not, you know, insulin resistant. Um, right. Most kids are not taking me the medications that are going to deplete magnesium. So their levels are a little bit different. Um, depending what's going on with it, I will at least sometimes dose the RDA at least. Um, mm -hmm. and sometimes if you do have them on a multivitamin, it will cover the RDA amount because it's quite small. It's 80 to hundred milligrams for most kids. Mm -hmm. Um, and so if that, um, if that's in the multivitamin, then that's really all that I'll use because at least they're getting that unless I feel like they need more for whatever reason. Now, ADHD children, they're going to require more because they're, they're depleted already, right? They mm. have already depleted it. Um, and then I'll usually pair it with like a B6 or something like that, just for more, uh, better absorption for them. And so, yeah, it really depends on the case. Um, but if the child's taking a multivitamin, they're at least getting the small amount of the RDA. Right. What yeah. about ADHD depletes it? Is it just the, the nature of the? Yeah, the hyperactivity, the, you know, they're usually um, have to stay away from sugar. So they're very much into the sugar stuff and sugar we know depletes magnesium gotcha. and it's a behavioral component, right? So they're just lacking a uh, nutri nutrient in their body and it's actually making some of their behaviors worse, right? Gotcha. And so there's lots of studies showing that, um, you know, the, the rate of return on doing like a magnesium B6 with these um, children and how less aggressive they were, how, you know, more, um, their behavior changed. Um, and it's, it's fascinating. It's fascinating. Yeah. It's really fascinating. And we're, we're just in the heyday of discovery. I feel like it's like the more research keeps coming out and especially with the gut and the gut brain access and it's wild. Yeah. And I mean, there's even more and more research coming out on magnesium, right? So, I mean, there's 120,000 <laughs> publications for um, magnesium. And so when you look at all that research and they're still like, you know, coming up with different um, research that's, you know, recent, like from December or even like last year, like they've got the dietary magnesium getting 550 milligrams to improve like Alzheimer's risk and dementia risk. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there was a paper that came out in December of 2023 showing that now it's involved in 800 enzymatic reactions. I mean, magnesium is a cofactor or a enzyme for almost everything that happens in your body. So, you know, I had said something about vitamin D. Well, you can take all the vitamin D you want in the world and it can be, you know, a lot of people will be like, oh, well, D3 is active already. Yes, it is an active form, but it has to be activated in the liver and the kidneys. And right. that activation has to happen with an enzyme that is required by like magnesium is required to actually get that enzyme and to um, submit it to the liver and kidneys. And so that's how vitamin D is, is then activated in the body and you can use it for whatever it is that you need to use it for. So that happens in many other areas of the body. And so if yeah. you are deficient, some of those things aren't working so well, right? And so, yeah, yeah. It's wild too. We somehow have gotten to this place with our bodies where we just think we can like, in the, like I'm just going to take my D3 and my D3 levels are going to go up. And it's like, no, there's all these processes that have to happen. It's such in a background. It's such yeah. a miraculous system. Um, it is. What you had mentioned pumpkin seeds for foods. Are there any foods that people can use? Cause I yeah, know that like, so, I know that like our vegetables, like the soil is stripped. So we're not getting quite the nutrients we used to get. We're not. And I wouldn't probably bank 
getting all of your magnesium <laughs> from value food. from food. That is likely not happening um, <laughs> unless you want to eat tons and tons and tons of plates and plates of leafy greens and, and, you know, salmon and avocado and dark chocolate and all the seeds. Pumpkin seeds is probably your best bet. It's the highest. Um, but you would need to be eating a lot of that to actually make sure that you're getting enough magnesium. But you know what? It's still there and it's a great addition. And I'm, I'm never against um, getting magnesium from food. It's, it's definitely, we can do it. We just probably aren't getting what we need, especially if you're doing something therapeutically. All right. But off the, what you rattled off, avocado, salmon, dark chocolate, leafy greens, Pretty much the, yeah, the standards, seeds, right? <laughs> sunflower seeds. Yeah, a lot of the seeds, dark chocolate, I said we mentioned. Um, some legumes. It just depends how people deal with legumes. Um, yeah. So, you know, if they're not good with lectins and stuff like that, it can it can yeah. cause a problem there. Um, but, yeah, it's mostly plant <laughs> foods. You're not getting magnesium from animal foods most times except for maybe the salmon, right? Like yep. most of magnesium foods are plant foods. So gotcha. think of eating lots of plants. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time. Is there anything like that we didn't cover that you feel like needs to be said that, that I missed? Not really. Just knowing that magnesium deficiency is so high and probably looking and the thing is with magnesium deficiency symptoms, a lot of them reflect other things, right? So right. a lot of them reflect maybe another health condition. And so this is why we don't actually ever look at magnesium, like from a physician standpoint, um, your doctor, if you go in and you say you can't sleep and you have joint pain and you're like low in energy, they're not going to look at you and go, well, maybe you should take some magnesium. Right. They're going to tell you, oh, well, you know, maybe you got arthritis and maybe you got, you need an antidepressant because you, you know, maybe you have mood issues and maybe you need to like take more iron. Like there's so many different symptoms that match so many different other, like other health conditions. And so nobody really looks at magnesium status. And so it kind of gets left out. And so, yeah, that's, that's just the way that that well, is. Well, I think and more and more people are getting hip to the fact that allopathic medicine is just band-aids at this point. Like you really, you know, and it has its place, don't get me wrong, but you know, you do have to see a naturopath or a functional medicine doctor to to get to those root causes. Yeah, absolutely. You always need to get to the root cause. Cause if you're, cause magnesium could just be a band aid, right? Doing the citrate right. for, for constipation could be just a band aid. If you're right. not dealing with what's actually causing that constipation, you're really not doing the whole root cause thing. You're kind of just slapping a band aid on and saying, here, take some magnesium so you can go to the bathroom. Yeah. But people yeah. love their band aids too. So you have to, you have to help them dig, right? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, awesome. Where can people find you on social media or website or? Yeah, I am very active on uh, Instagram. That's pretty much my major social media platform. And it's just at my name. So actor at Dr. Barb Volger. Awesome. And uh, thank you so much. I really appreciate your time. This was a super fun geek out on magnesium. I loved it. Thank you so <laughs> much for having me. Yeah. Okay, bye, you guys. Okay, bye, everyone. Just a reminder, if you need additional resources, I have Oh Crap Potty Training. I have Oh Crap, I Have a Toddler. And those books are available everywhere you want to find a book. <laughs> you can also go to my website, jamieglowacki.com, where you can book private sessions with me, buy any of my courses. Those are really geared towards potty training help. And also I'm on Instagram. I'm not on Facebook anymore and I'm not on Twitter. I'm on Instagram, jamie.glowacki, and I do a lot of lives and uh, usually posting a lot of good information. So those are extra resources for you. And as always, rock on. Have an awesome day.